It smells slow and sour when it blows, and no bird can ever sing, excepting old crows. It's the street of the lifted Laura. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lawrence once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lawrence away. What was the Lawrence? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old Wunzler still lives here. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the Wunzler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurker on top of his store. He lurks in his lurker, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of myth muffled roof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather's snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you hit the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snub, his secret strange hole in his grubbiest glove. Then he grunts, I will call you my wisdom of fall. For the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. Slump! Down slumps the whisper of all to your ear, and the old Watzler's whispers are not very clear, since they have to come down through a snurgly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees of his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green, and the pond was still wet, and the clouds were still clean, and the song of the swanny swans rang out in the state. One morning, I came to this glorious place, and I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright colored tops of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown barbaroos, frisking about in their barbaroo suits as they lay in the shade of the coffee tree. From the rippless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffular trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their cups was much softer than silk, and they had this sweet smell of fresh I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my car. In no time at all, I built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft top. And I did it. A few. The instant I finished, I heard a gazelle. I looked. I saw something come out of the stump of the tree I chopped. Describe me. That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy 
and he spoke with a voice that was sharp and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you made out of my truculent top? Look, Lorax, I said. There's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a flea. A flea may find something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lord said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. But the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along, and he thought that the need I admitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety-eight. I laughed at the Lorax. You poor stupid guy! You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room, and in no time at all, built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts, and I said, Listen here, there's a wonderful chance for the whole once of the family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Nation. You're like we want. Sharp right at South Street. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting fleas, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of tropical trees. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe packer, which whacked off four truffler trees at one smack. We were making fleas four times as fast as before. And that morning, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped. That the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barber roots, laid in the shade in their barber loose suits, and happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruit to go around. My poor barber roots are all getting their crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the once learned, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tunnels. I meant no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger. So bigger I got. I biggered my factory. I biggered my roads. I biggered my wagons. I biggered the loads of the needs I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs. And I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax! <coughs> he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled. He snarled. He sniffed. What, sir? He cried with a cruffulous croak. What, sir? You're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swabby swab. Why the can't take a note? No one can say for his smog in his throat. And so, said the Lorax, <coughs> please pardon my cough. 
They cannot live here, so I'm sending them on. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you smogged up around here. What's more? Snap the more his damp was on. Let me say a few words about gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs out day and night without a stop, making you gluppity glup. Also, sloppity slop. What do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old Watsler man, you. You're gluffing the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lord. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap yap and say bad dad, bad dad. Well, I am not right, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring, I'm figuring, and figuring, and figuring, and figuring, turning more truffula trees into sneeze, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud quack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall. The very last truffula tree of them all. No more tree. No more food. No more work to be done. So, in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away in the smoke, smoke and star. Now all that was left in the bad smelling sky was my big empty fat, the Lord, and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance. Just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself on the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he iced himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the small, without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rock with the one word, unless, whatever that meant, oh, I just couldn't get. That was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years, while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the Watsman, now that you're here, the word of the Lord seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the Watsman. He let something fall. It's a truffula seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds. And truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula. Treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow the forest. Protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lord and all of his friends may come back.
You don't know me, but my name's Sai. I'm just the old hair delivery guy. But it seems like dreams might be worth a try. So I say, let it go.
did a great job. At this time, if you will stand for our school song. <laughs> 